has done in your life, Mary. Where is she? Here she is. <laughs> oh, well, I want you all to know that <sighs> I'm very pleased to say that I am Mary Parker because I was married May 28th this year and um, this needs to be higher. Somebody who knows how to fix Stop the tape. <laughs> okay. Okay, as I was saying, I got married May 28th this year. And uh, when I was going on my honeymoon with my husband, of course, <laughs> I, had, I had finished, because I'm going to school, college, and I had finished writing a paper for um, a, um, a class I was in. And it was, the name of it, I called it Kicked Out of the Kingdom, Their Kingdom. And I gave it to my mother, and I said, I don't have time to send this off to Joan, so could you do it, and um, if she needs to use me, um, this coming convention, who well, she can, or maybe in the future. But I really never expected my mother to get it there on time. Uh, this is May, and I know Joan does the conventions ahead of time, prepare for them. And so she sent it off with a picture, and that picture that you see there is a picture of my daughter and I. And my mother never mentioned her name. Her name is Tracy. And my daughter was with me through the whole ordeal of being a Jehovah's Witness. And um, I wish she could be here tonight. Um, she, she doesn't feel the same as me, but she, she isn't in the organization. But, you know, I, I just pray for her that she would come to know Jesus, as I do. But um, she's a beautiful young girl, and I love her dearly. I just want you to know her name. Well, I got that title, basically, um, from this book. You might know Charles Trombley, who wrote Kicked Out of the Kingdom. And uh, I really enjoyed this book a lot. And I just wanted you to know, because you probably all um, caught where the title came from. Some of you did, probably. And so I just wanted to change one word, kicked out of their kingdom, not God's. Uh, I want to um, quickly go through probably the steps of, that led me up to going in to the Watchtower Society, and then the 10 years being there. I studied a year, 10 years in, and then 10 years coming out or out of the society. When I went into Jehovah's Witnesses, it wasn't really direct. Um, my brother had skipped school one day and the Jehovah's Witnesses came to the door and gave him the blue book, the truth book. And he had that for a while and he gave it to me one day and I read it and I thought, oh, this is terrific. It gets answers to everything. I mean, there's no hell. This is terrific. And I showed my mother. I said, Ma, this is great. She said, oh, put that thing away. That's garbage. That's all she ever said. And I really felt that she didn't know what she was saying. Because she didn't take the time to look into it and, and, and answer me. Um, I was, I was um, searching then to find answers because it was a troubled time. We're talking around 1970, 71, and from there, from uh, reading this book, I went on to studying a couple of times with the witnesses, and I found them to be very boring and uninteresting. So I left, I left Massachusetts, got a job in New Hampshire, and I ended up having a boss that was a Jehovah's Witness. He started me up with another study with his daughter, who was too young and brought along, probably it was a pioneer, I don't know. And I studied a couple of times with them and said, I have to get away from these people. They really don't know what they're saying. They, they, can't, they, they can't seem to talk logically to me. And they're not answering my questions. I should have really listened to myself and stayed away and never in, invited them in my house again. But my sister at this time now ended up coming into the Jehovah's Witnesses, my older sister, through my brother who had studied but never became one. And she sent someone to my door. I'm back in Massachusetts again, a job change. And this is uh, the year 1973, no, 72, around the beginning, uh, maybe middle. I'm not too sure of the time period then. Anyways, I studied with her and we clicked. Her personality was bouncy. It was, uh, she was um, rather dynamic and, and exciting to be with. Uh, she, wasn't, she wasn't boring. And so it was her personality really that pulled me in. And she gave me answers that I wanted to know. She didn't just drop subjects if, if I was delving into them too much. She answered things that I wanted to know. So from there, I studied um, and got baptized about, I think I should take my notes out. <laughs> I got baptized in 1974. And there was a lot of turmoil, as I said, in that time period. And I remember that um, my daughter would probably um, never have a rocking horse because the Jehovah's Witnesses talked about the end coming, and I wouldn't buy a rocking horse for her because she wouldn't need it. We were going to be in the new system. And I remember the long gas lines, I'm sure you all have, and uh, boy, that was it. The gas lines were proof. 
Uh, boy, uh, we, that's what we talk about at the Kingdom all, all the time. The gas line, that's proof. We're running out of gas. We're not going to make it. <laughs> I was sold 100% on the society. It, you know, I was out there with my baby on my back and those carry things that they have for babies in the middle of the winter in snowstorms knocking on doors. I actually looked down at some of the Jehovah's Witnesses because they've been in for years and they weren't doing what I was doing. I mean, I, I was really diligent to get this work done. We had a short time. But I didn't know they were in for a long time and they had gotten tired and they've heard. <laughs> they got tired of it. <laughs> so I was going to learn though. So I spent, uh, you know, I was pretty pleased with being a witness. Um, I felt like we had the assemblies. So the world had Christmas and birthdays. So what? We had the assemblies. We got dressed up at that time. We made clothes. I don't know about you, but in our family, everybody made clothes. And um, a lot of the witnesses I knew in the Kingdom Hall, they all made their clothes. And we looked snappy for the assemblies, and it was a great time. We got to be at a hotel, use a pool, and if you were like most Jehovah's Witnesses, they, you know, they weren't the upper class. They weren't well-to-do, and uh, we thought that was a great time to get away and go to a hotel, especially when we went to Canada. Uh, it was the International Assembly. That was terrific. We went out of the country. You know, how many people go out of the country? And this is what I would tell my daughter. Do you know how privileged you are? to stay in a hotel in another country. You don't need Christmas. What do you need Christmas for? <laughs> so she would think, oh, wow, wow, other people don't do this. And that's how I made up for her. So, but I, I must say I was very fortunate in one way to have a husband that was not a Jehovah's Witness. And he provided my daughter with birthdays and Christmas and things like that. Mm -hmm. Even though I would um, step back from it and say, no, no, you can't do that, I was kinda. Inside, I was a little bit happy she got something. You know, you just, you just have that. You just, if, you've, if you were ever out of the Jehovah's Witnesses, um, weren't born in it, came in it, you knew what Christmas was like, you knew what birthdays were like, they were happy times. They weren't as miserable, dreary times as they lead you to believe. So about this time now, I'm, I've done a lot of work in, with Witnesses, and um, I'm now expanding. I want to do other things, and uh, I want to meet other people. And, and I did this through herbs. I started selling herbs. And it brought me to another congregation. I should say, it brought me to another town where I met other people from another congregation. And one of them was an elder and his wife, and I got really close with them. And uh, we got to, to um, do a lot of talking, and uh, she would discuss things with me like there was problems in the Kingdom Hall, and uh, a lot of the problems were being solved with disfellowshipping them. And I said, well, what in the world would they disallow them over if it wasn't, you know, immoral stuff? What else is there? Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, oh, Mary. I said, well, drinking or immoral? What else is there? She said, well, two women got disfellowshipped because of grace. I said, grace who? <laughs> she said, grace, you know, grace. I said, well, what's grace? She said, grace, it's, well, it's, uh, it's, uh, gee, it's, well, it's forgiveness or something. It's, it's like, I don't really know, she'd say. I said, wow, that's weird, getting disfellowshipped on grace. So she, these people were writing letters to everyone, telling them about grace. And I said, well, can you get me one? You know, I don't know, but how in the world can you get disfellowshipped on grace? So <laughs> she, she got me one, and I still didn't really understand it. it you know, it just it didn't make sense to me. So in the meantime, I'm starting to have kind of funny feelings about the organization. Didn't, didn't really express them. I just started to feel unhappy out in service. When I would temporary pioneer, I would notice that the elders' wives and the pioneers would team up and go into the doors. Now, here I am with an unbelieving husband, and I had girlfriends that had unbelieving husbands. So when we're going out, we say, you know, these people always team up. Why aren't they with us, helping us? We need the help. So I'm a troublemaker, see? I'm saying the elders' wives should be with us, or the pioneers should be with us, and they should be training. You know, let's get the training program going here. I mean, what are you doing? So I express myself the other brothers and uh, sisters, mostly sisters. Well, I didn't know it, but I was cutting my own throat. Because one of the elders, Chris, um, who I sort of picked on his wife, Mary Lou, <laughs> he had it in for me, and I didn't know that at the time, that he had it in for me. And he started going around to people I basically hung around with, um, single sisters and um, um, sisters that didn't have husbands in the organization. And he went around to them and asked them, has Mary ever said anything to you? that was untheocratic? Has she ever said anything that was gossipy-like? And uh, eventually it got back to me, and I remember sitting uh, with a friend, and, she, and I said, something's going on. Did, do you know what's wrong with Chris? And she said, um, no. And I said, has Chris talked to you? And she said, no. And I said, something's wrong. Diane, talk to me, please. She said, I can't talk to you. I said, oh my gosh, what do you mean you can't talk to me? What's going on? 
I said, if I name people, will you shake your head yes or no? I said, is Chris after me? She'd go, no. And, no, shake her head. No, <laughs> get, it, get it right. And then I say, how about Bobby, another elder? She'd go, mm-hmm. And I say, what about Richard? Mm-hmm. I said, what is going on? What is going on? Can't tell you. Can't tell you. And I was getting so nervous. I said, they're doing something to me. What are they doing to me? I can't tell you, but it's bad. It's really bad. I said, oh, my God. And I am a wreck. I mean, I am really shaking in my boots because I feel like I've done nothing wrong. And I love the organization. I love Jehovah. I just, you know, and this is big stuff, you know. All that. You all know that. So anyway, they had a committee meeting for me. And they... Um, in the committee meeting, Chris was sitting behind me, who was the elder that drummed up this trouble. And then we had the uh, other three. We had Lee and, and Bobby and Richie, who were brothers, blood brothers, um, who were in the uh, committee meeting. And so they questioned me and questioned me about everything. And what happened was they brought out all their witnesses in, but all the witnesses didn't have really anything to say. So it all turned on Chris, who was behind me. And they, what they did was they put me on probation anyways, you know, just to kind of teach me a lesson. Just don't do anything in case you ever thought of it, you know. <laughs> so, here I am thinking, and, and then I find out through Bobby, who's the youngest elder, who's come into this, being an elder, he told me secretly we had to, um, you know, speak to Chris, because he wasn't doing things right. But I want you to know, Mary, you just put on probation here. Just, it's just for temporary, you know. So I was on um, probation, and I felt so sick. That was the turmoil that really started it. That th This thing about probation, it, it just, it's crazy. Um, I felt like they were watching me all the time. Big Brother is watching you. What, are you, what was I going to do wrong? Was I going to sit wrong? Was I going to walk wrong? I, I felt like I couldn't talk to anybody. They, they were watching me. Then finally they called the meeting, and I was taken off probation. So I felt like I wasn't watched anymore. And then it was all seemed rather ridiculous. But that wasn't the end of it. I started feeling very uncomfortable being, um, having this happen to me. So I started to feel very lonely. I, uh, and um, I started wondering why this woman who I would travel with back and forth to Lemonster for the herbs, why she was so nice. Why was she so kind? I was the Jehovah's Witness. Why was she so nice? I should be nice. I should be happy. How come she's happy? And matter of fact, how come my sister, Kathy and John, who are born again Christians in North Carolina are happy? And why have they got it together? How come I don't have it together? It just really rubbed me wrong. <laughs> I, just, I just felt like it isn't fair. And I would tell Jehovah, I said, it's not fair. You should at least make me look good. You know? <laughs> And so I started, I started praying to God. I said, Jehovah, Jehovah, you know that I know this is your organization. You know that I believe it 100%. Without a doubt, this is it. This is the only place on earth. I love it. I love being here. This is it. But if, for any chance, because the Bible does say that th there's a scripture in there that says that Satan can blind you. You know, he can, he, you can have like blinders on. So I said, God, Jehovah, please get me out of here if it's not the right place. Oh. <laughs> but I said the tack on the, at the end I said but don't forget I believe it is <laughs> so, so I remember um, one trip that I was taking back from Lemonster it's a 40 minute ride from Lemonster to Lowell Judy was driving I had to go in the, in the back of the truck she, she has the truck the cover over it and I was sitting there in the back she's got a lot of hay on the, in the back of it and I was sitting there with my daughter and it, she's uh, I think she's about 9 or 10 and I'm I started to sing. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones and him be... And I'm singing this, and she's going, Ma, what are you singing? <laughs> I said, why, what's the matter with it? She goes, I've never heard that at the Kingdom Hall before. <laughs> I said, well, I didn't learn it there. <laughs> I said, I used to sing that when I was a little kid. I used to go to church, the Baptist church. I used to sing that. And I said, what do you think? Doesn't it sound kind of cute? And she goes, I don't know. I said, you want to know another one? <laughs> and I said, I don't really remember too many, but B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God of the B-I-B-L-E. I, I said, isn't that great? And she goes, oh, wow, that's weird. <laughs> and, and I said, well, I think you're kind of cute. So the Lord started working in my life. He started changing me. And I remember at work, I was put on this job where I didn't have to do much um, and I used to read the watch on the awake all the time. I'm trying to get back into it. I'm going to get strong again. I'm going to be right out there. And it was depressing me. It was, oh, it was terrible. They were depressing me so much, the magazines. I'm saying, isn't there anything in these magazines, anything that's good? I mean, really good. Good stuff, happy stuff. And I started looking for happy stuff. And I started, I started thinking, there's nothing really in here that's really good. You know, like when you come out, you hear all these testimonies, these wonderful testimonies. They didn't have anything like that. 
not good. So I, I really started feeling bad um, about all the literature that they put out. I started to feel like I really wanted to know more. So I called Elisa up. Remember the elder's wife? I said, Elisa, um, do you have any more things? <laughs> she said, yeah, I have books. I said, bring them over. So she came over with a bunch of books. And we went through the books, and, and I really didn't understand uh, when she said that 1914, was not, that date was wrong. I said, I don't understand. I don't understand why they got it anyways, but I don't understand why it's wrong. So I couldn't have, I said, well, Lisa, it really doesn't matter to me. I don't care about 1914. What are the things? And she went, she brought a whole bunch of stuff out. And my sister who lived underneath me, I was in a two family, my sister who was a witness lived underneath me. And she was coming up the stairs. I said, oh my God, and we shoved everything underneath um, anything on the table. And we just acted like nothing was happening. She'd come in and we were scared half to death because, you know, you can't let anybody know you're reading all this apostate literature. So she left because we ignored her. Went back downstairs. <laughs> and... and and we got into it again. And I said, well, just could you just leave the books with me so I can read them over? So she left a few of them with me. And I looked them over and stuff. But uh, eventually, all these doubts, I had to get cleared up because I was going to stay in the organization. So I called an elder, David, and um, he told me that he would meet with me and talk over all these doubts that I had. In the meantime, I told my sister downstairs that I had read all this literature, but don't worry about it. I got an appointment with the elder. We're, we're going to clear it all up. And he said he would go over everything with me and everything was going to be fine. Well, she told someone at work who was a witness. And the witness immediately ran over to the elders and told them that Mary had been reading apostate literature. And they, uh, I heard about it, that she had told them, and I knew that she went to the elders, and I said, how could you do this to me? I said, I told you I had an appointment with one of the elders. And now, and, and this was an elder that was rather loving and understanding, and um, the brother had gone to, the brother that my sister had told had gone to the other elders that had been on a committee meeting with me before. So I was in trouble. And um, I flew off to New York to talk to my best girlfriend, Marguerite, who was in Buffalo. And we were like this. She had to move away, and uh, I just had to talk to her. So I flew out to talk to her. It was around Christmas time in 1983. Talked to her. I was scared to death. I said, what's going to happen to me? What are they going to do? Blah, 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 blah. She had, gone, she had been involved with a lot of disfellowshipping out in her congregation in Buffalo. And she was trying to, like, cheer me up and say, don't worry. Just say this, say this. Da, 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 da. She was giving me all this stuff to say. And I just went home, and I thought, well, maybe it'll be all right. I arrived on a night, I arrived home on a night that there was a meeting, and a witness lived next door to me. Now, my sister underneath me who was a witness, and the next door a witness. And he comes and knocks at my door at 10 o'clock at night, and I'm sleeping, and my, mother, my husband's still up watching TV. And he's uh, saying, who in the world is at the door? And I said, I don't know, why don't you answer it? So he answered it, and it was a witness next door. He come up, and he gave me a piece of paper that was torn, and it was written in pencil an appointment for a committee meeting for me in pencil and it was printed you know that is strange I found out later that they were told to do things in pencil you know and so the, and not make it look too good because people were I guess there was witnesses taking them to court on things like committee meetings and stuff like that and accusing them of lying so they were now putting things on in pencil so you couldn't really verify and they wouldn't sign it so I had a committee meeting and uh, at that committee meeting I had really I had lost it because uh, I was pretty upset. Um, I couldn't believe it was happening. Uh, and they had just fellowshipped me on apostasy, lying, and gossip. And I appealed it. And when I appealed it, you know that upsets them. <laughs> that really upsets them. They have to call in elders from other towns. So they, they called in these elders. Um, one was Drake, one was Lawrence, and I forget where the other one was. But uh, so here I am with three more. And. Uh, they brought all the witnesses. I guess they were a little nervous now. They brought all these witnesses in against me. And uh, basically, they had kept with the, same, the first decision, which was um, apostasy and gossip. And they threw out lying. They could find no grounds for lying. And I was glad they threw that out. Um, <laughs> it, just, it just made me feel better as a person, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> I was never a liar. <laughs> but during the course of the, of the meeting, um, when my sister was in there testifying against me, I had, um, I had completely fell apart and ran to the ladies' room, and uh, I locked myself in the bathroom. And people came in and were knocking on the door, and I was, somehow I was blacking out. All the voices, all the noise of the knocking on the door were just going off in the distance. I couldn't hear anything anymore. It was the strangest feeling. It was like I was going into a coma, staring straight ahead, going into a coma. Something was happening to me. It was just like I couldn't hear them. They said they were yelling and screaming at me. I couldn't hear them. Well, they told me that 
my husband had, because my husband had come, because he didn't know what was going to happen to me, because I, I was so serious about this religion, he didn't know what was going to happen to me. Yeah, Dr. Jason Morrison, Theologist again. I just want to say thank you for watching the videos, and I uh, hope you got plenty of uh, self-rediscovery and freedom out of it. If you watched it on YouTube, please share or like, um, maybe even comment. If you watched it on Facebook, like, comment, share. Um, but most of all, get out and live. This isn't a rehearsal. You've got a one of life. Don't let your loyalty and your faithfulness blind you to the life that you should be experiencing. Till the next video, thank you for watching and bye for now.